the doctor is in. Thank you so much for tuning in again. This is your pal, Dr. Sal. And in today's episode, we are going to take a look at gabapentin. We're going to look at the five most common side effects you might experience if you embark on therapy on gabapentin. Now, gabapentin has a lot of unique features. The first is, although it was originally licensed for as an anti-epileptic for a seizure treatment add-on, I have never seen it used in my entire career as a seizure treatment. We seem to use it for everything else but seizures. I've seen it used for sciatica, spinal cord injury, diabetic neuropathy, chronic daily migraines, fibromyalgia, anxiety. Like it seems like we use it for everything else but what it was intended for. But in general, if you collapse all of those different indications, the main thing that we typically use it for is when you're looking for a non-opioid uh, solution for chronic pain of some type. <clears throat> all right, so that being out of the way, that's the first unique thing about gabapentin. Next, let's look at the lineages it comes in. So you can get it as 100 milligrams, 300 milligrams, 400 milligrams. Then you can also get it in sixes and eights. Now here's the next unique thing. This lineage here, the one, three, and fours, come as capsules. While this group here, the six and eights, come as tablets. And that, again, is almost unheard of in the pharmaceutical world. Typically, if a manufacturer starts their drug lineage as capsules, the whole line is caps. If they start as tablets, the whole line is tablets. This, again, is unique that they have this kind of split structure with gabapentin. So let's move on to the side effects and the study um, that the manufacturer reports about uh, side effects experience. That again turns out to be pretty unique. Um, it was a study of 543 people, 543, but it is one of the most polluted studies I've ever seen coming out from a drug manufacturer. The, the first thing is it doesn't specify in this group what strength they were on. So they could have been on sixes or fours or eights or three hundreds. They lumped the entire group together in the study, which to me is pretty asinine. The other thing is um, they didn't do it as a, as a clean study where you had uh, a population put just on gabapentin and a population put just on a placebo. What they did instead is they took people already on other seizure medicines because that's what it was originally tended to do. And then they did it as an add-on and looked for emergent effects. So they took a population group of four, 543 people already on other antileptic medicines and then added gabapentin in, in one half of the arm and placebo in the other arm. So again, it's a very dirty study, but we'll take it for what it's worth. So in that study, it was run over 12 weeks, which again, to me is kind of short. So 12 weeks uh, the study was run for. And um, the first most common side effect that people complained of was feeling sleepy. That was in 20% of people. 20% felt sleepy. But again, if you take that for what it's worth, if you look at the design of the study, well, if you're already taking seizure medicines and then I come and add gabapentin on it, well, I guess you would be sleepy. So in real practice, I typically don't find, I have had the occasional instance of somebody saying that they felt a little lethargic or retarded on the, on the gabapentin. But in general, for most people, it's, um, it's not really an issue. All right, the, the next thing that a lot of people complained of is dizziness. But again, in my practice, because I'm typically using it for pain syndromes, uh, I, and not with other uh, seizure medication in general, uh, I typically rarely ever see that as a side effect. So even though it looks like it's a common side effect, again, I think that's because it was an add-on to somebody already taking um, seizure medicines. 
All right, next up, which is would be a deal breaker for a lot of people, is weight gain. And I have seen that uh, typically in females using the gabapentin and is typically related to causing more water retention. Again, because it's dominantly in females, I suspect it has something to do with, with uh, estrogen because estrogen also tends to retain fluid. So that seems to amplify the effect of the estrogen. Uh, I've only rarely had to pull somebody off of gabapentin as a consequence of the weight gain being so astronomical. In general, it's a minor degree. All right, next one is a tremor. So like shaky hands, which seems a little odd considering it's meant to, it's meant to squelch um, excessive nervous turmoil. So you would think it would reduce tremor, not increase it. And then 6% uh, complain of double vision. And again, in practice, I don't see that. So again, I think, actually, I hardly see this one either. Again, I, I believe that the two of these are actually a consequence of being an add-on. If they had done the study the way it should have been done, which is clean, no other medications, a pristine human body, and then you just add the gabapentin, I suspect you wouldn't have seen um, these, or maybe only seen it at the very highest possible doses. <clears throat> now, one other thing I should mention is um, the typical start dose is 300 milligrams, so one of the capsules, three times a day. So if you did start on this therapy and you were experiencing uh, one of these side effects, the most likely, in my opinion, would be the sleepiness, the weight gain in female, um, dizziness I don't typically see very often. But suppose you did experience one of these side effects and um, you felt pretty confident it was because you just started your gabapentin. Well, there's a couple of different options that you and your physician could employ. And this is what I typically would do with, with my patients. Um, one possibility is instead of starting off with three, 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 what I might do is pulse load it. So, or back load it. So reduce the strength of these fellas. So maybe put these in your daytime as say like a hundred and a hundred. And then maybe what I could do is bump this one up here to say like a 600 tablet. The idea is in the daytime, when you're moving around and need to be alert and not sleepy, use less of the dose and then back load the sedating part of it or the dizzy part of it when you're asleep, when you're not going to notice it anyway. In fact, it should enhance your sleep. Obviously, another option is simply to just stop the therapy altogether, but then obviously you're losing the benefits you might have accrued from using it for fibromyalgia or diabetic neuropathy or some other chronic pain syndrome. So overall, I find it a, a, a very useful drug. It's not, especially when you want uh, to not have to embark on opiate therapy or somebody who's already on opiate therapy but still not getting sufficient results on it. You don't want to keep escalating the opiate because of all the side effects and uh, stigma associated with that. So I find it as a useful add-on. But it can also hold its own by itself as well. Um, I find it especially useful in uh, diabetic neuropathy. So we're getting like burning feet at night from damage to the nerves from uh, attrition by sugar exposure over a decade or two. So um, that, ladies and gentlemen, is the top five side effects uh, that you can experience with gabapentin. Again, take the percentages with a grain of salt because this study was so uniquely dirty. But um, if you did experience some of these side effects, the, the incidence rates may not be correct, but I have seen these things happen in, in practice. Uh, those are some options that you can use to work around the nuisance side effects and still get the benefit of the drug. Thank you so much for watching. Stay well, and we'll chat again soon. Thanks for watching. Get notified of new videos. Subscribe now. If you found this video helpful, support us by sharing it with all of your friends and throw us a like below. You're a star. Cheers and cheerio.